The term wonder kid has become widely used in football over the last couple of decades, and we are seeing the label being slapped on younger and younger talents, along with increasingly ludicrous price tags. Success in this sport is never assured however, and boatloads of talent alone is rarely enough if not accompanied with the right attitude, mentality and a solid network of support. This is why, for every rising star who eventually ends up in the stratosphere, there are countless others who fall by the wayside, forgotten. A player who I believe falls more into the latter category than the former is attacking midfielder Enzo Schifo, who is arguably one of the best players that Belgium ever produced, but is scarcely known by many modern football fans. Born in the Belgian mining town of La Louvie, Vincenzo Enzo Schifo was a son of Italian immigrants, and growing up had some difficulties in being accepted by the locals and described his hometown as a tough area. Like many Belgian boys his age, he loved football, with it quickly becoming apparent that he was blessed with extraordinary talent. Young Enzo realised that success in football was his only pathway to a better life than the one lived by his coal miner father, as Shifo himself recalls. I soon realised that football was about the only talent I had which offered a better life than that of my father. I used to see him come home from the mine every night, and he'd tell us about his day, and about what sounded like hell, the mud, the dirt, the danger, and working on your knees buried away from the sun and the sky. He joined local side Louvier Waz at the age of 7, and set about reaching the first and most important milestone on any aspiring Wonder Kids journey, making mincemeat of youth level football in record breaking fashion. In 4 years at the club, he scored an eye-watering, seemingly impossible 432 goals as a junior. This absolute madness and his obviously limitless infinite potential and talent led him to being dubbed the Little Pele, ticking another box on the Wonder Kid checklist and early comparison with one of the immortal greats of the game. The big boys of Belgium quickly heard about Enzo and the race was on to secure his signature. It was a scramble which was won by Anderlecht and he joined the purple and white as a 16 year old in 1982. He made his day debut the following season at the tender age of 17 and quickly established himself as a key player. Anderlecht, managed by Paul van Himst at that time, played some electric attacking football, advancing the play with some lovely one-touch passing combinations and one-twos, as well as having a number of players who loved to take the ball and run at opposition defenders. Enzo took to it like a duck to water. A quintessential number 10, Schifo slotted in behind the strikers and fulfilled a kind of roaming playmaker type role, as he would drift around, demand the ball and bring his team teammates into play. What Shifo lacked in pace and acceleration, he more than made up for in skill and technique. Blessed with a gorgeous first touch and calm and composed with the ball at his feet, Enzo was a natural and elegant dribbler of the ball, and he would often lead opponents a merry dance as they followed him on a mazy run before he utilised his exemplary vision and found one of his teammates with an exquisite pass. Shifo was one of those players who could see opportunities on the pitch which others simply couldn't, and had the range of passing to pull off some audacious plays, threading the ball through the eye of a needle, touching it on first time, switching it with a long crossfield ball, or playing a reverse pass down the wing. He could spray the ball about in ways that his contemporaries could scarcely dream of. Although of course, at such a young age, he wasn't always as accurate as he would grow to be later in his career. His off the ball work was also commendable, and he was always ready to counter press when possession was lost to win the ball back high up the pitch and instigate some dangerous situations. His intelligent reading and understanding of the game allowed him to nip in and make interceptions. Anderlecht were a team that liked to play out from the back, and Schifo's coolness under pressure and ball control allowed him to help his team play their way out of trouble from their own half. His accurate crossing meant that he was one of the main men chosen to take free kicks and corners and often caused chaos from these dead ball situations. Overall, the amount of influence and control he could exert over proceedings at such a young age was nothing short of remarkable. His debut season was almost the stuff of dreams, as Schifo and Anderlecht made it to the finals of the UEFA Cup, with young Enzo having a big say in them reaching that point. The Belgian giants were trailing 2-0 after the first leg of the semis against Nottingham Forest at the city ground and faced a mammoth task in overturning the deficit at home, but in the 18th minute, Schifo went on one of his trademark runs and the Forest defenders failed to close him down and he had the time and space to lash home an unexpected shot from the edge of the box to give his side hope. His strike certainly did seem to inspire them as Erwin van der Berg slotted home Anderlecht's third in the 88th minute to complete a famous and unlikely comeback. 
They faced another English team in the decider, Tottenham Hotspur. Anderlecht were probably highly disappointed to come out of the home tie of the two-legged final with only a draw, as they dominated the match, played some really nice stuff and created the best chances, but only had a 1-1 scoreline to show for it. The second leg at White Hart Lane ended with the same scoreline of 1 all, and the two couldn't be separated after extra time so it went to penalties. Enzo duly dispatched his, but Martin Olsen and Idriga Johnson's dad Arne Yor missed theirs to hand an historic UEFA Cup victory to Spurs. Although, to be fair, 13 years later it would come to light that the Anderlecht chairman had bribed the referee for the Forest second leg, and there were a couple of dodgy moments in that game. A soft pen for Anderlecht and a goal that's allowed for Forest. So perhaps a slice of karmic justice was served via the medium of penalties in the final. Enzo achieved Belgian citizenship just in time for Euro 1984, and after a fine breakthrough season, the young hotshot was called up to the national team. The midfielder garnered international attention as he completed another wonder kid rite of passage, breaking an appearance record and becoming the youngest ever player to appear at the competition as he started the Red Devils opener against Yugoslavia. He was impressive and assisted George Grun's debut goal and Belgium second to wrap up the win. Perhaps the nerves got to him in the second match against France, as a lot of his passes were poor and wayward, and Belgium were thumped 5-0 by a rampant Les Bleu inspired by a Michel Platini hat-trick. The legendary Frenchman was generally impressed by Chico, however, and would later say this about him. He's the only European footballer who can genuinely be considered my successor. The final group stage match was against Denmark, who had clearly done their homework on the playmaker and attempted to keep him quiet by doubling and tripling up on him, which more or less worked. But such genius as Enzo's can never be fully repressed, and he did complete a couple of lovely dribbles. Belgium were 2 0 up after 40 minutes, the second being an absolute corker from Frank Verkauteren, who blasted home Schifo's throw in on the volley. They would completely collapse not long after this and ended up losing 3 2 and were dumped out of the tournament. Back on the domestic front, Enzo would help his team to back-to-back -back titles, with his form in the 84-85 season being particularly electric as he scored 14 goals in the league. In the 85-86 season, Anderlecht went on another deep run in Europe, this time in the Champions League, or European Cup as it was known then. Schifo scored the opener in the second leg of the semi-finals against Bayern Munich, ghosting in behind the Bayern backline to latch onto a flicked header and volley first time low into the bottom corner. It was a stupendous goal, which again provided the spark for another thrilling turnaround as they won the match 2-0, overturning a 2-1 first leg loss to record a 3-2 aggregate victory. The semis were against Stau Bucharest and Schifo scored the only goal the first tie, recovering from the embarrassment of taking a fresh air shot to chase down Van der Rijken's chipped through ball and ping a parlour past Duckerdam. Alas, destiny was not on the side of the Belgians as Stau thumped them 3-0 in Romania and went on to win the whole damn thing, famously beating Barcelona on penalties to be Round kings of Europe. He did not have time to dwell on another European disappointment however, as he was once again selected for the Belgium squad for Mexico 86. Enzo Schifo had a wonderful World Cup. His dribbling was at its maze, mesmeric, snake-hipped best, and he was distributing all manners of balls around the pitch with pinpoint accuracy. He scored in the second group stage game against Iraq and got the equaliser against the Soviet Union, a crazy game which Belgium won 4-3 after extra time. Penalties were needed to take them past Spain in the quarters. Belgium were playing well and seemed to be an irresistible force. Unfortunately for Schifo and the Red Devils, they were matched against perhaps the only immovable object which could have stopped them, and Argentina led by the divine inspiration of a prime Maradona who scored two against them. Enzo's meeting with Maradona would leave a lasting impression on him, as he would later recall, I came up against a few great players in my career, but Maradona is among the ones who impressed me the most, and not simply because of his style of play. I've never tried to measure myself against anyone, I just had admiration for a player like him, even if he was my opponent. A deflated squad lost 4-2 to France in a third place playoffs to finish fourth, their best ever showing in a World Cup and one which would not be bettered until 24 years later when the so called golden generation finished third at Russia 2018. To put the final cherry on the Wonder Kid cake, the 20 year old Enzo was named as young player of the tournament in recognition of his virtuoso midfield performances. He would have one more season in Anderlecht, helping to seal a third consecutive Belgian first division title before the inevitable 
Incredible became the Irresistible, an Inter Milan parted with 7.5 billion Italian lira, roughly 3 million pounds in today's money, to take him to Syria. Playing in the homeland of his parents could have been a fairy tale story. It did not pan out this way as Enzo's career and development started to stall after failing to impress during his debut season in the Serie A, only getting 5 goals and 1 assist in 44 appearances in all competitions. He started off well, but due to a combination of injuries and a toxic locker room, Chifo's performances started to suffer to the point that he had lost the trust of manager Giovanni Trapattoni. After only a year in Italy, Chifo was again on his travels, this time to Bordeaux, in the hopes of getting his faltering career back on track. Unfortunately, he continued on a downward trajectory, as further dressing room disagreements and issues with senior staff members led to some disjointed showings on the pitch, as well as questions over his attitude, work rate and commitment to the cause saw his second season away from Belgium end in disappointment, as he only managed to make 24 league appearances. He did score 7 goals though, which sounds pretty decent to me to be honest. Nevertheless, the once lauded future star of European football was now looked at by many as a fallen hope, someone who may never come good on his enormous early potential. Enzo Schifo is philosophical about this time in his life, and apparently took many valuable and lasting lessons from the experience. If I had the chance to do it all over again, I would do things exactly the same way. Arsene Wenger once said that every player should go through a bad patch in their career, so they can learn to handle the disappointment. In my opinion, you should come face to face with it as early as possible in your career, and I can honestly say I don't have any regrets. As fate would have it, he was taken under the wing of the right man at the right time, as a move to Auxerre saw him link up with the calm and nurturing Guy Roux. Roux had experience working with insanely talented but difficult youngsters, since for the best part of a decade he had tried his best to guide L'Enfant Terrible, Eric Cantona, away from the dark and into the light. Unfortunately, Cantona had departed Auxerre for Marseille the year previously, so we never got to see him and Schifo combine. A great pity, as I reckon that would have been a thing of beauty. Behind a front three of Pascal Vahirua, Christoph Kokar, and Kalman Kovacs, Enzo quickly rediscovered the kind of form which had seen him touted as Europe's brightest talent a few short years previously. His 11 goals and 1 assist in 33 league appearances held dogs there to a respectable 6th place finish. He bagged another 5 as Le Diplomat made it to the quarters of the UEFA Cup. That summer, at Italia 90, Schifo scored one of his most famous and perhaps his most beautiful goal, a scintillating first-time angle strike from all of 40 yards against Uruguay. Belgium would only make it as far as the round of 16 though. Back in France, Schifo clearly felt comfortable and relaxed at Auxerre under Roux, who gave him the freedom to express himself and dictate the play as he saw fit, and the Belgian had an even better season than his first at the club, scoring 14 league goals to help the team to third place in the league, their best finish since 1985. Enzo was at the top of his game again, displaying the kind of form the footballing world hadn't seen since his days at Anderlecht and his stock was once more on the rise. A return to Inter Milan, where Schifo clearly felt he had a point to prove, was almost rubber stamped, but evidently the universe didn't think it was the right move for the 25 year old playmaker because Inter had already reached their quota of foreign players and so he ended up at Torino instead. It was 1991 and he was joining a talented and exciting team in Turin, featuring young prospects like a 23 year old Gigi Lentini and an 18 year old Christian Vieri. Schifo would taste success and finally get his hands on silverware after a 6 year barren spell while at Torino, as they won the Coppa Italia in 1992 with Schifo scoring in the last 16 and the quarters and assisting Andrea Silenzi in the second leg of the final, a vital contribution which helped secure a 5-5 aggregate scoreline meaning Torino won it on away goals. Enzo had himself tasted how cruel it was to lose a final in this manner just a year previously. Torino had been on an exhilarating run to the UEFA Cup final, famously and thrillingly overcoming Real Madrid 3-2 on aggregate in the semis to set up a final with Louis van Gaal's Ajax. A topsy-turvy end-to-end first home leg in Turin finished 2-2, with Schifo assisting Casagrande's 61st minute equaliser to make the score 1-1. This meant they would have to score in Amsterdam without reply to win the cup. The team went all out to make this happen and they were just centimetres away from victory, hitting the woodwork on a gut-wrenching three occasions as the second leg of the final ended 0-0, and in the most savage of fashions, this time by the away goal rule, Schifo was again denied a major European title. Alarming finances meant that Schifo was not allowed to build on a promising two years in Italy as the club were forced to sell their best players. Manager Emiliano Mondonicho had clearly not been impressed with what he had seen from the Belgian during his couple of seasons there, as he denounced him to the press after ensuring Schifo was the first one out of the door. He never made the difference. He plays well 
well when the team does well, but he completely disappears when the team is up against it. That's typical of someone lacking in personality. Unfortunately, it's hard to find a lot of Shifo's matches from this time to verify this statement. I only managed to watch European and Italian Cup fixtures where he played very well, but it does sound a bit odd given the fact that Shifo started virtually every possible game while at that club, making 88 appearances in just two seasons, scoring 20 goals. A typically defiant Shifo refuted this himself, firing back at his ex-boss and sounding more and more like a tortured artist, unappreciated in his own time. They have never fully understood me. The manager who buys me has to build a team around me, it's not me who has to adapt. His destination was again France, but this time Monaco. His first season there saw him work with an exciting up-and-coming French hotshot manager by the name of Arsene Wenger. He would only get one full season under the future legend in which he played very well and helped the team to reach the semi-finals of the Champions League, only to lose to eventual winners AC Milan. Wenger was dismissed only a month into Schifo's second campaign at the club. Schifo would spend four seasons on the French Riviera, the longest he had spent in one place since leaving Anderlecht, but his time there was beset by injuries and he managed only 11 league appearances across the 94-95 season and his final year at the club, in which he added the Ligue 1 title to his trophy cabinet, was spent mainly crocked on the sidelines, only managing 15 league appearances. He returned to Anderlecht where he would spend another three seasons and add another Belgian title to his list of honours in 2000 at the age of 36. Across a glittering 18 year career at the top level, he scored 162 goals in 693 appearances for club and country, Enzo Schifo was a genius who was nominated for the Ballon d'Or four times, yet his contemporaries who played in a similar position to him are household names, while Schifo is much less well known. Ask anyone about Michel Platini, Diego Maradona, Roberto Baggio, Georgi Hadji or Michael Laudrup and I'm sure they'll know who you're on about. Enzo Schifo? Mm, not so much. Why is this? Firstly, I feel he lacked a bit of luck. With a bit more good fortune, he may have had two UEFA Cups and even a couple of Champions League to his name. Then there was his personal troubles with the managers, who never seemed to quite get him and questioned his attitude and character. However, I feel this conundrum is best summed up by two quotes. The first from the man himself who said, A lot of people have accused me of never fulfilling my potential and always falling short of my goals. These people should try to find players who can boast records similar to mine. There are a few, of course, but only a few, and I'm happy with that. The second comes from legendary goalkeeper Jean-Marie Pfaff, who shared the field with Schiefel for Belgium and once said, I don't much fancy playing with someone who is afraid of ruining their hairstyle on the pitch. 